Well, good evening, friends. Sorry for the brief delay there if you were waiting on us uh, to go live this evening, but uh, we're here tonight for our uh, this week's edition of Virtual Vespers. I pray you've had a, a good week so far. Uh, perhaps maybe you're like me, and uh, when you start thinking about the day or the week, uh, it gets a little muddled, but I I'm glad you're able either to join us here live this Wednesday evening, or perhaps a few hours from now, uh, maybe even a few days from now. Uh, but uh, know that your church is praying for you here at Williams, and, and I'm glad that you're able to be with us in one way or another. Before we get into our uh, time of prayer tonight, I've got just a few sort of updates, announcements, those kinds of things. I hope you've been able to join us for worship either here on Facebook or over on our YouTube channel. Uh, following the link, maybe even you're receiving still through our email. Um, I hope you've noticed that we've been continuing to, we're, we're almost getting pretty good at, at doing this. Uh, of course, as always, we 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 be able to do any of this without the guru himself, Chris Cheatwood. So uh, thanks uh, to Chris for helping us with that. Um, so I hope you're able to join us for worship. Maybe you have some friends, uh, family members who are wanting to join uh, but unsure about how to do that. If you can send them that link, point them this way. You don't need a Facebook account to join us for worship here on Facebook, uh, and you don't need one on YouTube either. So you can join us uh, when those uh, worship videos premiere every Sunday at 10 o'clock. I also want to just continue to encourage you. Uh, thank you for your uh, faithful, continuous giving to the church. We're able to continue uh, on, even in this strange time, doing uh, so many of the things that our church does in supporting our community and around the world. So thank you uh, for that. I also want to want to tell you uh, that on May 17th, so that's not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, May 17th, we're going to have communion at home. And here's what that'll look like. You'll hear more about this from me next week and, and some announcements that will probably go out in the email uh, this weekend. That means Whatever you've got that you're able to bring together with your family. If you've got grape juice and, and crackers, great. We know it won't be just like it is here at Williams. Uh, our, our time together in communion, I think, is, is pretty widely known as a special time here. But also, uh, we want to make sure we're still connected together, sharing in this special occasion with one another. So uh, on May 17th, during the worship service, we will uh, have communion at home with one another. Uh, so even if you don't have grape juice, if you don't have crackers, whatever you have, whatever elements you have, bring them together um, with your family and join us for communion during that service. And I'm going to ask that if as you gather together uh, with your family to share communion on, on May 17th, that you share a, a photograph, maybe a picture uh, here on our Facebook page of of your family's elements coming together. We want to share in that and uh, make that just another special time uh, of worship in this very strange season. So May 17th, that's uh, a week from this Sunday, we'll have communion at home. And I invite you to share pictures of your family's table uh, with us here on the Facebook page. Another announcement, um, another thing that's happened, I just noticed today, looked out my office window and the recycling trailer is back. Some of you have been asking me, uh, where did it go? When are we going to get it back? Honestly, I didn't know, but now it's here. So um, I'll just ask that you please use that responsibly. If you're like me, you probably have half a garage stacked up with plastic and other recyclables. But uh, again, just use that responsibly. No, you're not the only one who's probably been stockpiling too. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be back in the room of having that uh, here at the church and taken away uh, once a month. Uh, as for... Reopening things, uh, again, just as I came to you last week, we're still under uh, Alabama sort of sheltering in place, uh, modified sort of reopening of the state right now. Um, and, and this just today, I've been listening and, and reading about some statistics, especially about uh, gathering together for, of all things, communal or choral singing, uh, which is such a vital part of any worship service. And so... As we're looking forward to a time when we can come back together, no, I'll be looking at those things. Uh, we'll be talking about how we will reopen and what that will look like. But at the plan right now is to continue 
um, with our sort of online worship and, and, and gatherings, at least through this month. But as things improve, if they improve, uh, you'll be uh, updated either here on our Facebook page or uh, through email, phone calls, and those sorts of things. So uh, as we come together tonight for Vespers, um, I want to remind you too, as always, if there's anything you need, anything we can pray for you about, uh, feel free to send us a message either here on the Facebook page, call, leave a message at the church office, or uh, contact your family's deacon and, and get the word out. We're, uh, our deacons are on a, a big text, sort of group text thing where we share prayer concerns. We're praying for you um, in, in, your church, in our church in this time when we're all apart. So as we come together tonight for a time of prayer, I want us to begin uh, with just an invocation and a word of prayer uh, together this evening. So let's pray together. Lord, we come to you now uh, praying that your spirit joins us in this time when we come together virtually. Lord, that you meet us where we are, that you unite our hearts through whatever means we may be uh, engaging this time together. And God, that in the days and weeks ahead that you continue to call us, continue to remind us of who you are and who it is you call us to be. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, you, you may notice uh, that I'm not this evening in my office. I'm not in uh, the sanctuary and I'm not by the fire. It's a, honestly a little warm in the building to be by a fire this evening. Some of you may recognize this room. This is our prayer room. Uh, for those of you who are not sure where it is, it's off the rear entrance by the double glass doors. Uh, it's a small room we have set aside uh, for those times when our building is open and there isn't a pandemic, uh, for you to come and have a quiet space to pray, to reflect, uh, and to just spend some quiet moments listening to the Holy Spirit and and to what God may have to say to you. This room, uh, when things are normal, and during the week, at least once a week, sometimes two or three times, I come into the office, I, I empty my stuff on my desk, out of my bag. I come in this room, usually with headphones on, and I sit and listen and pray, using an app some of you heard me talk about, Pray As You Go. And I find that it, it helps to, to center my day, to center my life, to be in a space set aside for prayer. I want you to know your church has that space for you when we're able to be back together and safely reopened. But I thought as, as we join together for Vespers tonight, I wanted to come from this room and enter into a practice of prayer that we've done a time or two together called Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina simply means just sacred reading or a holy reading. And what we're going to do is, is listen to the psalm for this week, as we've been doing over these last few weeks, to listen to the psalm, but we're going to hear it three separate times. And each time I'll, I'll give you a prompt for something to listen to, for a way to engage in the text. And I just simply want you to listen now before we get into Lectio Divina, uh, let me encourage you, maybe if you have something to write with, something to write down on, to maybe get that, bring it close by so you can have uh, a space to write, especially if you have a journal, that'd be great uh, to bring that close by. And if you don't, it's okay too. You don't need anything to write with. To find a comfortable position, but not too comfortable, don't, don't fall asleep on us. Um, but find a good position, maybe feet flat on the floor, straight back in your chair, listen to your breathing, that sort of thing. As we enter into this first reading of, of the psalm, Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, and verses 15 and 16, this first time as we read together, I want to ask you to listen for one word or phrase that sort of jumps out at you. A word or phrase that the Holy Spirit impresses on you. And then meditate on that word, that phrase. We've talked about meditation as we listen to Richard Foster, uh, as we study together on Wednesday nights, his book about spiritual disciplines. So I want you to listen to the psalm. 
and there's a particular word or phrase that stands out, meditate on that for just a, a few moments and see what God may be saying to you in that word or phrase. So again, as we listen now to Psalm 31, listen for a word or phrase the Holy Spirit may be impressing upon you. Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, and verses 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not, do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hid from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Again, a word or phrase the Holy Spirit impresses upon you. Take a moment or two to meditate on that. Now, as we read the passage a second time, I want to ask you to Enter into the passage. Put yourself in the place of either the one who's reading or writing the scripture, singing the psalm. Perhaps as one inside the passage or maybe someone just there in the room with the writer. But enter into the passage. What do you feel? What specific situation in your life today relates to what you feel in the passage. If you have a piece of paper, a journal or something, write down a prayer that you might feel led to write down or pray it quietly about what it is you feel in this passage that Christ has revealed to you. So again, what do you feel when you hear the words of this psalm? What specific situation in your life relates to what you feel as you hear it, write down or quietly say a prayer about that feeling. So again, Psalm 31, 1 through 5, verses 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Again, what do you feel as you hear the words of that psalm? And what specific situation in your life today relates to what you feel from those words? And now as we listen a third time, what is God's personal invitation for you in these words? You can write down what God may be saying to you, what you feel Christ is speaking to you. 
you may write down a prayer of thanks for what God is saying to you, already said to you. Or you can simply rest quietly in the presence of God as we listen again to the words from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I take I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. And to your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Again, what is God's personal invitation for you from this scripture? Feel free to write it down, to offer a prayer of thanks, or to simply rest quietly in the presence of God. Now, I want to invite you to enter into a time of prayer as we've been doing in these weekly gatherings, our threefold approach to prayer, to pray for the church, both your church here at Williams and for Christ's church around the world. As we still wrestle with this present pandemic and as we think now about what church is going to look like in the days ahead, to pray for others. I'm specifically moved this week to pray for those who are, are at the most at risk in the midst of this pandemic, not just because of the, the coronavirus of COVID-19, but as I had a conversation with one of my dearest friends this week, we were talking and they said to me, you know, I, I'm, I'm concerned that when everyone else goes back to normal, those of us who, who are compromised, won't be able to go back to normal for quite a long while, if ever. And so I, I want us to pray for those who, who are potentially forgotten when this is over, to not forget them and the lessons we've learned and caring for one another in the midst of this. And then, of course, to pray for yourself. As I've said each week, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> this is, um, it's okay in the midst of all of this to not be okay. I also want to say it's okay if you are. If you look around and wonder why others are feeling so much maybe worse than you are and there's a sense of guilt that you may have, it's okay to be okay and it's okay not to be okay. These are uncharted waters for all of us. So take some time to pray for yourself. And as we pray, remember that. Pray for the church, for others. Take some time to pray for yourself. And then I'll voice a prayer for us and end our time together by praying the Lord's Prayer together. So let's take some time now to pray with one another. Holy God, we are thankful for this opportunity we have to join our hearts together in prayer for your church, Lord, for others, for ourselves, in the midst of this pandemic of quarantine, of sheltering in place, of social distancing. Lord, we, Lord, you know our, our hearts are, are weary of all of this. We long to be back to some semblance of normalcy. God, we trust you. We place our trust in you and 
the many ways that you are able to bring us together through your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, this evening, as we've prayed with one another, as we've listened to Holy Scripture, we ask that you carry us on through the rest of this week. Or that you bring us together in whatever ways we are able through worship. God, that you keep us encouraged in the days ahead as we look forward to coming together once again and worship with our brothers and sisters in this place. Lord, as we go this evening from this time, we pray, Lord, for one another. God, we pray for your guidance. And we pray the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen.